So for this segment today, we're going to talk about how to make sure DrawWorks brakes are properly adjusted. One of the most frequent causes for service on a workover rig is brakes not operating properly. Usually that comes back to improper adjustment. There's been a lot of different ways throughout the years of the right way to adjust it. Oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. This little segment is designed to walk you through step by step the three steps necessary to make sure brakes are properly adjusted. So with any rig maintenance, the first thing we need to do is make sure that the rig is safe to do work in. We need to make sure the engine is off since we're working in the draw works. We need to make sure the blocks are either chained or sitting on the ground. And we need to make sure that the crew is aware of work and will not start the rig while the work is being done. So the first adjustment we want to check on any band brake is the equalizer assembly. On most band brake rigs, it involves an equalizer connecting two bell cranks to turnbuckles to the brake bands. On some rigs, this assembly is replaced with a grease cylinder. We'll go over both in this session. It's important to check the equalizer first because if this equalizer is set improperly, then any other adjustment that tries to be made will end up being wrong because the equalizer isn't set properly. So to check if the equalizer is set correctly, chain your blocks, excuse me, chain the brake handle, lock the brakes, and you're wanting to see that the top of this bell crank and the top of this bell crank are level with one another. If one of these are up or down or not level, then these turnbuckles here need to be adjusted to bring these back level. This is the foundation step required to adjust the brakes. So with the equalizers adjusted, now it's time to look at the second step, which is adjusting the individual turnbuckles for the band tension. Again, with your blocks chained and set, you would use a tool. Now, most rigs out there supply some sort of tool to measure brake tension. A lot of people don't use them. They don't think they're necessary. I personally would highly recommend having the factory tool and using it the way the factory recommends. In this case, with your block set, or excuse me, your brake set, you would slide this tool in here to measure the gap. Ideally, you want less than a sixteenth of an inch of space between, or of clearance between the tool, the flange, and the caliper, or excuse me, the, uh, the, the bell crank. In this case, you see we have more than a sixteenth of an inch. So in this case, the brakes need adjustment. If this tool were not to go in, that would also be an indication of the brakes needing adjustment. So again, put the tool in, ideally less than a sixteenth of play, brakes are good. More or less than sixteenth, the brakes need adjusted. So now we're to step three, which is adjusting the band retainers there around the band and the springs. In many cases, this is a step that gets avoided when you're having brakes adjusted or when you're checking brake adjustment, but it's very important to make sure they are properly adjusted so the brakes live long. So once you've set your equalizer and your individual band tension, now you have to set these retainers. Every brand of rig has a different way of doing this. Some have rods that come down, pins. The tailors have a arm with a bearing. With the bands, brakes locked, bands tight, you want about a 3 16th inch gap between the roller and the flange. In this case, this one's set just about right. You want this kind of clearance on every one of the rollers all the way around the brake flange or brake band. Once those are set, you also want to make sure your spring tension is good. Your spring tension is what allows your brake handle, when you bring up the brake handle, it allows that band to unwind properly. If these are too loose, then this band won't unwind properly when you try to release the brakes and the brakes are going to drag. So, in this case, these could be a little bit tighter. It's one of the, it's kind of a feel test. Just a little bit of spring tension is what you want to see in it. 
You want the ability, that, like I said, this can move around just a little bit more than we like. We'd like to see this a little bit tighter. Once you have all this set, you'll have someone at the brake handle who will release the brakes, raise the brake handle up, while someone ensures that the flange is contacting all the rollers and that these springs pull the brake band away from the brake flange. Once you've gone through all three of those steps, everything's in adjustment, the rig should be ready to go. So on rigs equipped with grease turnbuckles, the adjustment procedure for the equalizer is slightly different than on conventional turnbuckle rigs. The step to equalize the bands is with the brake handle chained down, you will open the grease valves on the left and the right. And you will leave these valves open for about five minutes. This allows the grease in the system between the cylinders to equalize. Now, it's recommended that at the end of every tower, you open these up to let them equalize overnight. The first of the shift, close them back. That way you know they're equalized. Now, a lot of operators we hear run with these valves open so the bands equalize during operation. We don't recommend that. We don't recommend that because these valves are an important safety feature. They protect one side of the grease system from the other in the event of a line failure or cylinder failure. With these closed, should you have a failure of a line or the cylinder, you still have brakes on the other side. However, if these valves were left open and the rig was operated with the valves open and you had a line failure or a cylinder failure, you potentially would use, lose both sides of your brakes. So it's very important once you equalize the bands to always close the valves when you're finished. So we hope this segment has helped better understand how to make sure brakes are properly adjusted. If you have any problems with what you've learned here today, we encourage you to call us at the factory at Taylor, call any of your service people. We'll be glad to walk you through this step by step.